what I find wild is um, because seeing the cycles and seeing the signals on the chart, that's pretty mind blowing. Like I keep having to remind myself that I would have seen that signal at the time. This is not retroactive. Mm -hmm. um, but what's even more incredible is that this came from your dreams. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about that? I was not happy about it at first. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I'm always obsessed with why why do things work the way that they do, right? My interest in in trading has very, I mean, believe it or not, has very little to do with how much money you can make. That just makes the game interesting, makes it worthwhile, right? I was when I used to play video games all the time. I want to know. I I play the video games thinking, how did the game creators think about making this game and what are the rules they would have put in place to do it? And now let me play according to that. Very annoying. So dealing with the financial markets is sort of like, it's so fascinating because you go, it's an insight into the behavior of millions of people. That's why I like it. Yeah. Trillions of dollars. And you get information that's like unlike anything at all. It's like the, it's like the weather for the economy. So I find it to be super fascinating. And it, it was bothering me how, why, why don't we know exactly where the price will go? Why is it going up and down? Why is it cyclical? Why is there any oscillation whatsoever? Why isn't it just flat all the time? Like, I, I don't get it. What's, what's happening? And so when you have burning questions within you, it makes it easier for, for you to get in, in, uh, answers to... It's possible to go into your dreams to get information from the answer, says Peter. I learned this from, uh, um, from, from Jordan Peterson, this idea where you can have, um, he was talking about people who, it's like your DNA holds the resident vibration of everyone that came before. And um, that's why the, the second generation blacksmith is, better, is a better blacksmith than someone who isn't. And the fifth generation blacksmith somehow has it in their blood. You know, we like to, we like to poo poo these things, but it turns out that if your father and your father's father and your father's father before him was good at a thing, chances are you're going to be good at it too. Uh, we're good at speaking. It's not for nothing. And so this, if your um, name is Smith, you might want to join a blacksmith. In you might want to be a jack, exactly. And so the, the, uh, I would regularly, if you, I've had a burning question, I would regularly have um, dream characters explain to me certain things. Um, I remember meeting the first banker. I remember meeting uh, um, uh, someone who claimed to be like Joseph Campbell and to to provide me information about like hero's journey. Yeah. Like there's all kinds of things people I met in my dreams. And then this one time I had this this one dream I had didn't even feel like a dream. It was like it wasn't like a vision. It was like this something else. It was like I woke up and I was some somewhere else, and I was in this library, and I go to this library. And a bunch of things happened. I had, I had a choice made, given to me at the library where the librarian gave me a choice of, uh, so what, what do you want to read? This beautiful, large, golden library that went on like infinitely. It was this most beautiful library I had ever seen in my entire life. And they said, I said, well, what are the choices? I said, well, you can go to the left or you can go to the right. And the librarian pointed to the left and um, to the librarian's left. And I could hear adventures and cheering and roaring of crowds and dragons and clinking of gold coins and just fun and sorrow and adventures galore and i was like oh my god that's all so wonderful i'd love to be i love to be that in that direction to go in that direction and read those books and then i she pointed off to the uh the other side and i felt like this sort of like knowledge and wisdom but no adventure <laughs> at all whatsoever and the librarian said well if you go to the left you'll have a, you'll have a life of wonderment and you'll be it'll be exciting from moment to moment and you'll never know what comes next but that's all it'll be it'll just be entertaining and if you go to the right you will get the answers to the questions that have been plaguing you your entire life about the nature of the universe, uh, about uh, purpose and destiny and all the answers to all the things you ever wanted to know. But you will no, no longer have any adventures. And 
you will no longer you won't be lifted up onto the shoulders of people and your name won't go down in the history books <laughs> as a brave and courageous person and no one will ever know you for that you might never be known <laughs> and previously i would have gone i would have gone left are you kidding me i would have gone left <laughs> immediately are you out of your mind okay fine i'll go take the adventure <laughs> but i guess i'm at a point in my life where i just with much pain turned away from the left and i said i'll go right and the librarian looked at me almost as if i've been given this decision decision many times before and uh smiled and said good choice and <laughs> led me down to uh, the right side and sent me off in the direction told me where to go so i went down these stacks infinite stacks golden stacks infinitely high infinitely deep and i walked through i walked through and i, get, I turned down a, an alley that i a row that I felt like I should go down this aisle. And I go down the aisle and I walk through and there's books everywhere, books everywhere, just massive amount of books. And I look up and I feel I should go to this one book. And I pull this book off the shelf, this like leather book, large book off the shelf. I pull it. And on it is, it says cycles as the title. And there's an image, a uh, symbol of what I later learned to be was Metatron's cube. I, I couldn't have, told you what metatron's cube was before this <laughs> but it was on, on the book and then underneath it said uh tom hartman as if i were the author i said like, excuse me <laughs> so i open up this book and i start to i start to read it and the first line i start to flip through and the first line of every chapter says everything is like everything else everything is like everything else and I, go, hey, I know what that is that's fractal that means fractal everything is like everything else it's a fractal phrase and as i I then I landed on a chapter and as I, I went back to the beginning of the book and then I started to read the book, I fall into the book. I fall into the book and I just tumble through like uh, uh, this this zooming portal thingy. Like a Doctor Strange I, kind of. More like a sliders, but really quickly. And then I end up in uh, in this sitting room it's beautiful, uh, no windows to it. One large door, wooden door, but it's very ornately decorated. It's like a rich person, like a like a very well-to-do room. High ceilings, but not not, not too big, but high ceilings. Um, inside there's like this black globe and there's books and this it's interesting, but I was thrown by the fact that there was no windows. And the door opens up and this guy walks in who looks, imagine a Peruvian shaman <laughs> and whatever it is you're thinking, that's what walked through that door. <laughs> Tall, sinewy guy, feather, headdress. I don't even know what a Peruvian shaman looks like, but that's what I imagine. <laughs> and he goes, Tom, you're here. Okay. All right. We can get started. And I look behind the shoulder and I see a bunch of other guys there standing around, milling around at the door. And they're sort of like whispering, looking at me. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, he's here. Tom's here. Can you imagine he's here? Oh, look who's here again. And they look all different. Some of them like look like humans. Other people were in suits. Other people look like aliens, things like things, things I couldn't um, identify. But it was, I don't know, 10, 11 of them. And the, uh, so the shaman's there and he's like, he lays it all out. He's like, okay, you're here. So you want to know about the nature of the universe. You want to have answers to all your questions. Good news. We're here to teach it to you. <laughs> And uh, I was like, what is happening right now? What are you talking? What, where am I? And, um, and so through it all, as I try to so, just try to sort of like figure out what's going on, I could sort of hear my own voice still reading the book. <laughs> I can't exactly make out the words, but it's sort of like me reading makes me go into this room. And then it sort of jarred me. So I stopped reading. And as soon as I stopped reading, I was back at the book. In the, in the library, staring at it. I was like, what the? And then I continue reading more and I'm back inside of the room. He's like, hey, hey, relax, Tom. Relax, <laughs> just keep reading. And then he, he goes to lay out this whole thing about how I can be part of the school and learn about the nature of the universe. And if I follow along with the exercises, they'll teach me how to be a shaman as well. Uh, these are shamans. And um, and I said, yeah, of, of course, I, I love to learn. And then it it turned into a thing where Every almost every night for about a month, which was November 2021, all uh, almost every night for about a month, I dreamt, I, w I, I would dream, I would go read the book, and I would be in this uh, in this room and I would study, and 
gave me all kinds of different exercises, things to read, conversations with different people. And it was just so fascinating. I met other people, like other people like me who were also studying. I was like in the school. And um, I remember this one guy, he would show me around. He's like, oh, this interesting thing is over here and interesting things over there. And you'd open up a door and there's amazing things. You open it up. It was like, um, you open it up and it's like, uh, uh, Jumanji is one room. And another <laughs> one, you're in space. And then another one, you are you're you open it up and you're a different person and you close it and you're like, what is happening? And it was all these different things that were going all over the place. And uh, one of the things they told me, the shamans told me in the dream was to make sure I didn't go and research anything beforehand. Like if I was going to tackle a subject, don't look up that such a subject beforehand. Let let them teach it to me and then go look up the information so that I could be sure for myself that it was true, that it was coming from my dreams. I didn't know any of this stuff. And uh, in one of those, uh, eventually I, got to, I did this for, for a while. And then eventually I was like... Um, I was, I was interested in the stock market and I was like, oh, I really want to know about the stock market. Like, I really want to know how to make money in the stock market. They're like, Tom, <laughs> we have access to infinite information over here and there's all kinds of other things. Like we're prepared. To, we have other things we need to be doing. We need to prepare you to get, get you up to speed with these other things. And I go, I understand, but I really want to, I really want to know how <laughs> the stock market works. I want to be able to predict it. It's really interesting to me. So like, okay, like what if you were able to live for 10,000 years? What if you were able to remember past lives? What if you were able to have powers within your world? I go, I want to know how the stock market works. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're not going to, we can't be wasting time with that. We have other things to do. And then I would just not go back to the dream. I would just not go back to the dream. And um, they started like whispering in my mind and I could hear them throughout the day. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. And then eventually I told them, I gave them an ultimatum. I said, you teach me how to make money on the stock market <laughs> or I'm never going to help you guys out. Cause I got the sense that they, they wanted me for something. They, they, for some reason they seemed to have needed me or whatever. And, uh, and I said, you fine, ultimate. <laughs> fine, we'll teach you how to do it. And then it was like, um, a month or two of, of, uh, studying the stuff I was telling you about. And then I programmed this stuff in and I end up with cycles and I end up with flow and I end up with these things. And I was like, what is going on? Um, so that was absolutely fantastic. They weren't very happy later on when I reneged on my deal and I didn't do what they wanted me to do. Um, <laughs> I said, what happens, if, uh, what happens if I don't do what you want? They're like, okay, we gave you what you want. Now can we go ahead and do what we need to do? I go, nah. Because what they wanted me to do, I was just not, it was too scary and I wasn't interested in doing it. Um, and they said that, if I didn't do it, I said, what happens if I don't do it? What of it? What are you going to do about it? They're like, well, you're just going to live a life of sorrow or regret, and then you're going to die, and then your next life is just going to be back here again. We're going to have to go through all this again. I go, okay, that, that's, that works for me. Okay, <laughs> no. right, we'll, we'll see you later. We got to get you to that. <laughs> got to get you 